You know, recently my brothers showed me a picture of my mother. You know, they honor veterans every year and my mother's picture goes up among other veterans. But I didn't realize in the place where I usually park that my mother's picture is among those that is shown. And I was just so surprised to see my mother's picture. I was like, wow, there she is. So that is my mother, the one who has brought me into this world. So that is my mother. One of the first African descended people as far as women serve in the U.S. Army. She was one of the first after civil rights to be able to do that. And she's had a very storied experience. So I wanted to take this time to talk a little bit about my mother because it's the time, the time has come for me to do so. And so one of the things I wanted to do is talk about my mother because, partly because one of the biggest regrets I've had <clears throat> is that I didn't record her when she was walking this earth. And I regret that because she had profound wisdom. And she was not only profoundly wise, but had deep insight into people, society, nature. And those are conversations that live only in my mind. And there's really no way Yes, I talked to a relative earlier today about technology that will be able to visualize what's in your head, but it's not quite the same. It's not quite the same as seeing, seeing knowledge, I wanna say ancestral knowledge, but in a more common tongue, family knowledge and wisdom in a much more concrete way where you know this is the true source of the information. And I have many reasons why that would be a good idea, not just, you know, for me, but for people in general. I call it a time capsule. That may not be the best term to use, but I call it a time capsule, where when there are others, generations from now that say, hey, what did so-and-so think? Who were they? I do think that something like this is the best way to accomplish that. So before too much time passes and before the memories fade, I'm going to take this moment to talk about my mother. So my mother, among other things in her life, she served in the United States Army and she was part of intelligence, military intelligence. Uh, one of those areas was CID. So, in her journey, she was part of a group that uh, she called WASPs. And keep in mind, I don't know the origin or definitions of all these things, but I just want to move through the, na the, na the narrative. So, she was part of this group called WASPs. W-A-S-P, and um, she was one of the, what, you know, they call, you know, so-called black people. She was one of the first uh, black uh, women uh, in, in this type of work. So she worked with the, earlier, the earliest computers, Microfish, and she worked at the Pentagon. And she was exposed to uh, very powerful people, and the way, the way that, that they thought, the way that they saw the world and, the, what, and what they had as far as like 
expectations, etiquette, manner, and that sort of thing. And so she was trained and um, groomed in that way. So, and so uh, her and my father both worked uh, in the military, uh, served in the military, and, um, you know, uh, they both worked at the Pentagon. So, thing is, is that, um, you know, she was very wise in what she knew, not only from her exposure to four-star generals on a regular basis and politicians, but just uh, life in general. And I want to reflect on four or five things, four or five things that are the works of wisdom that she tried to implant into me. It didn't take when I was coming up because, you know, I was so contrarian and I was so indoctrinated in what I was doing with religion and with politics and with uh, corporations that, you know, she had a very clear and sober way of looking at these things that she related to me. But the, the good thing about the way my mother would train me or teach me is that she did it through repetition. Lots and lots and lots of repetition. She didn't, she never assumed that I got it. She made sure I got it. So, one of the things that she taught me, and this is, I was, this was brought to my mind in a video I did recently about uh, what is woke and spirituality and religion, right? And so, one of the things that she tried to teach me was that the military, in many ways, helped uh, foster religion. And that religion is designed for social control. So that was one of the lessons that she, she taught me. And she went into great detail about that. But the summary is that it's, it's, about, it's about control, social control. So, again, it was one of those things that I would deflect or dismiss because it was like, it can't really be that way. And I do think that in some cases when we talk about some religious movements like uh, Buddhism or some types of Islam or uh, some types of Christianity, that um, there is still a authentic and, and genuineness that, that is there. But I think when we look at the more established um, religious institutions, right? When we talk about, let's say, um, you know, the really big religious institutions, I think you have more a case for what my mother was uh, saying there. The other thing that she wanted to uh, get across to me was that much of what we see happening in the world, it's all about money and power. It's all about money and power. And those that have the money have the power. And those that got the power more than likely has the money. And so they go hand in hand, money and power and a little bit of sex, right? So money and power and a little bit of sex. The world just operates around that. So the third thing that she wanted me to really understand, and this is actually her most important lesson for me, and this is one I work on all the time, is don't be anybody's fool. And her, one of her statements that, you know, it comes from, you know, a Southern upbringing in the country, you know, you gotta wake up real early in the morning to fool me, is what she would say about herself. But, you know, I, I understood what she meant about that, is that, you know, um, people can really go to great lengths to really uh, put a con on you, to um, put you in a fix in a game. And so, you know, you just got to make sure that you understand what that game is and that you don't fall prey yourself or you work as much as you can, do what you can as much as you're able not to be anybody's fool, even if sometimes you have to play the fool. And so... Um, that was probably her number one wish for me is just not to walk through this world foolish, but to walk through it um, 
super intelligent, wise, and, uh, and just to understand. You know, my mother was an Eastern star, and at a young age, I uh, got exposed. She, she didn't want me to actually be any part of any organization, right? Even though she was part of one, you know, um, she didn't want that to be my life. And I don't think my father wanted that for me either. But the thing of it is, is that, um, you know, when you are a curious young kid, you are looking at things. And I looked in some of the esoteric books and, you know, in addition to having read the Encyclopedia Britannica uh, by the time I was six and seven, um, before the age of 13, I had um, some good exposure to esoteric knowledge. And so that goes hand in hand with what she was telling me about religion was that uh, she took me and my brother dutifully to church for a long time. And uh, my grandmother uh, made sure I was very well educated in uh, Christian knowledge in a very formal way. But my mother's private advice to me, just to me, was, hey, go through this process, but when you are old enough, make up your own mind. She didn't tell me what to think. She trained me how to think, and she trained me and she raised me to be very independent staunchly independent so she said make up your own mind so I didn't mean to do it I, didn't, I really didn't mean to do it this way but I ended up making up my own mind so even though she did not uh, live in this world to see how I would develop in terms of spiritual knowledge and spiritual evolution organically it all just came together to be what it is. It is what it is, right? And so, um, so I think I know that if she saw how I would end up at this point and at this moment, shedding all the indoctrinations and all the brainwashing and all of this, I think she would be extremely proud. So those are the lessons that um, my mother uh, taught and she um, Im impressed upon me. And she did live in this world long enough to see the 2016 election. And her statement about that was, the class, it was so low class, what she was observing in that uh, particular election cycle. I didn't quite get what she meant. I was too entertained at the time. But having seen the recent debate, I'm going to have to agree. And so that's just a quick moment in the day of life of Michael Gaucher and those that really need to know can ask more questions. For everyone else, I will see what I can do. I'll see you later.